Bless the name of the Lord. We serve a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. And we thank the Lord for each one that's come this evening. We thank the Lord for those that are joining us online. God bless you. And I know that God's going to bless you in a tremendous way. Do you have an expectancy for a miracle? Come this evening and have an expectancy for a miracle. What have you prayed about today? Let God answer it for you today. Before you leave this place, you'll have a confirmation in your heart, a, a peace in your heart. And you know, Sunday night, the service, there, there was just such a beautiful presence of God. And God was speaking to us so much about peace in every situation that we face. We must have that peace. Don't ever let the devil rob you of your peace. Stay in peace. Amen. So we thank the Lord for this day. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we bless you, we glorify you, and we magnify you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you take over this meeting, take over this time. We dedicate this time to you now, Lord God. Have your way, your perfect will and way in every one of our lives. Thank you, Father God, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, is our portion. Thank you, Father God, that, Lord, we'll stay in peace. We'll not allow anything to rob us of the peace that you only give. And I thank you for this now, Father. I pray, Father God, for an anointing over this time of praise and worship. I pray for an anointing over the Word. And I thank you, Father God, that each one will be encouraged. That, Lord, they, they have an expectancy for a miracle. And that you're going to meet them right now at the point of their, their need right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Turn to somebody around you, wave at them or shake their, shake their hand or tap them on the shoulder and say, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go for it. At the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing my Was the blood applied? Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. To my heart was the blood applied. From sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where He took me in. Glory to His name. Glory to.
glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of blood. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. I don't know why, but I've always felt like this is almost like a Christmas carol. Even though we sing it in worship often and it's light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. And that just reminds me of how the darling of heaven stepped down into this wicked world to rescue you and me. If we would just receive him. And as we go into a time of worship this evening, I want you just to forget about all the things and the distractions and just focus on Jesus and everything he came to do. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me Like a flood, 
His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Save a wretch like me. But now I see My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior Has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing grace And grace, my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior. Has ransomed me like a flood, his mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Lord, as promised good to me, his word, my hope, secure. Oh, 
Oh, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. Unending love, amazing grace. The chain have been removed no longer are you bound that unending love oh his love will never ever end he loves you oh his mercy we serve a merciful God glorious Lord we love you Lord God we love you Lord God Amazing grace, amazing love, amazing grace. And then John 8, verse 12, Jesus spoke and he said again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Hallelujah. Thank you that you'll confirm every word by your word. Thank you, Father God. Your word will not return void, but will first accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Lord, tonight as I minister this Bible study, I pray, Lord God, that, Lord, that you'll give us ears to hear, hearts to receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Lord, let us listen. And let us apply your word to our lives, I pray. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but let us be doers of your word, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Whew, it's getting hot up the top here. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. How many of you know that God... He truly answers prayer. You know, one thing I've known about God all the years that I've served the Lord, that He likes nothing to be wasted. Now, friends, what do I mean when I say wasted or lost? When we look at the Webster's, the Webster's Dictionary, wasted is interpreted this way. Extended without necessity or use. Lost through negligence. Squandered, wasted, squandered. Diminished, dissipated, evaporated, exhausted, desolate, ruined, destroyed. This evening I want to speak on nothing wasted. We look at the verse found in John chapter 6 verse 12. We're going to read it from the NRV. And it says, yeah, when they had all had enough, and I'll relate the story to you now. They had had enough to eat. He said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. We do not serve a God that squanders. We do not serve a God that wastes or is exhausted. Our God Jesus said, let nothing be wasted. And every experience you go through in your life, it is not wasted. It might be a painful experience. It may be a situation that you like to just forget. But let me tell you something. Something good will come out of that. God will never allow anything to be wasted. 
And we see the story here. The Bible tells of a time when Jesus, he fed a crowd of people, approximately 5,000 with only five loaves and two fishes. And in the Sunday school class, over the years, we've heard the story of this little boy that came, sent by his mother to go and buy some provisions for home. And on his way back, he had five loaves and two fish. Now the Bible says very clearly here that Philip came to Jesus and saying, Lord, look at this crowd. We're far away from the shops. We are far away from the traders. They are hungry. They are tired. So rather send them away so that they can go and get something to eat and be nourished once again. You can see, Lord, there's the little children here. The mom's been dragging them around the whole day. And they are tired and they are hungry. And Jesus said, give them something to eat. Now, friends, 5,000 people, even in those days, was a lot of money. Jesus said, give them something to eat. Now, I know when we look at the life of Philip, he was uh, an astute businessman. And sometimes he overlooked the area of faith, even though God used him in tremendous ways. But here Jesus gave Philip an opportunity to overcome his weakness by at last confessing his inability and the Lord's ability. You know, many times people want to use their own ability to meet the need, whereas we must see the Lord's ability. And here Jesus used this great opportunity where Philip had to actually acknowledge, Lord, we neither have meat nor money, but we have Thee. When last did you say that, my friends? Lord, we neither have meat nor money, but we have Thee. The greatest provider was standing right next to Philip. And when Jesus saw and he had compassion on the people. They found a little boy, this little boy standing there, listening eagerly to what Jesus was saying. And let me tell you something. Faith rose up in his heart and he said, all I have is five loaves and two fish. You know, I want to tell you something, friends. When you would give that over to the Lord, your five loaves and your two fish, the Bible says Jesus blessed that five loaves and two fish, and he multiplied it. Now, friends, years back, and I think it was the first anniversary of Message of Faith, we were having the year-end function. Now, we had set up, and we thought, well, we would have probably 50 people come. But over 100 people attended. And there was a pot of, I don't even, don't even know, what it, was it rice or was it rice? It was rice. Now, when you run out of rice, everything else doesn't quite work, okay? And so... Lorna's uncle was standing, and Yvonne's uncle, they were sta- he was standing watching this pot. And all hundred people came and dished up. You know, we, we're full gospels, okay? We love to have a good dish up. You know, we dish it up. And he says every time somebody scooped that big spoon out there, the pot filled up. He lit about... 70 people go through, and then he called me, and he said, this pot is not going down. I want you to know, friends, we didn't have any more rice, but God made it stretch. Now, our heart, everybody tap your neighbor and say, our heart, is not only to feed those that are in the building, but to reach out to others. In this church, in all the 25 years nearly that we've been here, 
Anytime we've had a function, anything, and anybody that's been here will know. We don't only, don't only give to the people at the church. We give to those that are out there on the street. They know it. And we will always give. And my desire was to give. But I thought, well, we expected 50. More than 100 came. Oh, Lord, okay, well, then those are the 50 extra that we will give. But that's not what God's plan is. God wants to bless and he wants to multiply. And I want you to know that once the hundred people had all been fed and they ate and they ate, then the pot started to go down. And it got to about half level. And we are now at the end of the function. And I said to Lorna, you know what? We can't, I don't believe in wasting food. We must give this away. And so... Lorna and Yvonne and Clifford and myself, and the children, we got all the containers. I think that must have been about 80. And we fed every homeless person on the street near the church. And then the pot ran out. Now let me tell you something, friends. When you give it over to Jesus, He will bless it and He will multiply it. And we saw that miracle. And you know, that miracle stood with Uncle Ted all the years. He was amazed at the power of God, and the power of prayer. And I can just imagine this little boy looking at his five loaves and two fish that he had now given to Jesus. And Jesus blessed it. And he broke the bread. He broke the fish. And more than 5,000 people were fed. Now that's a miracle in itself. But I want you to know, friends, this is where the miracle happened. You see, that day everybody had enough to eat, but there were still 12 baskets full of bread and leftovers of fish. Now, I don't believe it was, no, I don't feel like that, no. It was after they had given out to everybody the leftovers, the untouched food, the useful food. You see, God never wastes, and God does never want us to waste. In every situation we go through, He wants to use it for His glory. And that's why I testify to the power of God and to the power of prayer and the power of faith to see God multiply and bless whatever you give to Him. There were 12 baskets full of bread and fish left over. We serve a God of abundance. Tap your neighbor and say, we serve a God of abundance. And I want to say this. If we serve a God of abundance, get on God's agenda. Get on God's agenda, because we do serve a God of abundance. And then Jesus told his disciples, collect all the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. You see, with God, nothing is ever wasted. He will never waste an experience that you go through or that you face. Something good will come out of that experience or come out of that situation. He'll never waste a hurt. And many of us have faced hurts and we, we thought that he's forgotten us, but he'll never waste that hurt. He'll bring you out victorious that you'll have strength to face anything in the future and that you'll be able to help other people. He'll never waste a dream. Many have forgotten their dreams that the Lord gave them. God's never forgotten it, and you'll never waste that dream. It will be fulfilled. You'll never waste a single piece of bread. And that's why, friends, we must follow his example. Let nothing be wasted. If you have felt like you've wasted years of your life, maybe in the wrong job, or, or hanging around the wrong people, or doing the wrong things. And many times, friends, we go through life and we've wasted years. Wasted. 
resources, wasted our life. God will gather those years and restore them to us. And here's the promise of the Bible. What does the Bible say about restoring what has been lost? You see, God always keeps His promises. Tap your neighbor and say, God always keeps His promises. Our God will restore everything you lost. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 30 verse 3 from the Message Bible, God will restore everything you lost. And I stand on that promise. You know, when somebody's ripped you off or somebody's stolen from you, let me tell you something, God will restore it. And when the devil gets found out, he must pay seven times. He must pay seven times. The Lord says, I'll give you back what you lost to the swarming locust from the hopping locust and the stripping locust and the cutting locust. It says to us in Joel chapter 2, verse 25, and I'll read it. It says, and I'll restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. How many years has the locust eaten of your finances, eaten of your health, eaten of your, your existence, and you feel like you're worthless? Those years must be restored. The years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, Friends, I want you to know that the Lord wants to restore you. He wants to restore you. But when he, when he does something, friends, He does it in blessing and in multiplication. We're not a God that divides. We serve a God that multiplies. I said we serve a God that multiplies. Look what it says here in 1 Peter 5 verse 10. But the God of all grace, the God of all grace... He calling us to His eternal glory of Christ Jesus after you have suffered a little while. And many of us go through trials and how we come out is what counts. What you learn in the experience, what you learn in the valley, what you learn in the hurt, what you learn, you know that He's going to never waste that situation. He'll bring you out better. He'll bring you out stronger. He'll bring you out more victorious. My Bible tells me He will perfect. When you look at the word perfect, He will restore. He will restore what the canker worm has eaten. He will confirm, He will strengthen, and He will establish you. And I thank the Lord for that. That He'll never let us go through anything that we cannot endure. Many times I've prayed and I've cried out to the Lord and I've said, Lord, you said I'll never have to go through more than what I can endure. And how faithful He is. You see, Jesus, He took those experiences that the enemy meant for your harm and He turned them around for your good. Oh, friends, what the devil has intended for your harm God has turned around for your good. What the devil has tried to mount up against you. Just go read the book of Esther with Mordecai, Haman. Haman had pl- planned to have Mordecai hanged, even had the gallows made lied, mounted up things against Mordecai. But because of prayer and fasting, it turned out that the king, Esther, got to the ear of the king in peril of losing her life. And I want you to know, friends, throughout the Bible, no experience, no situation will go to waste. Just like Jesus concerned himself for the food because it could be given to others. I could just imagine that little boy going home with more than what he had actually bought at the shop some distance away. can just imagine his mother saying, where did you get all of these fish? And where did you get all? I only gave you so much money. 
Just imagine. Just imagine. Somebody said to me the other day, Pastor, I didn't have any money for petrol. But I went to the petrol pumps and I gave them 200 rand. He says, when I looked again, my whole tank was full. And I still said to the guy, I said, only 200. He says, that's it, boss. 200. His tank got full. Nothing wasted. Nothing wasted. He'll make you stronger. He'll make you wiser. He'll make you better off than you were ever before. Friends, don't think God's not, he, He's forgotten you. Don't ever think that. God is in control. God will bring you through victorious. He can launch you further into your destiny than before. He can bring promotion your way that no man can ever shut off. No man can ever block. No committee can ever stand in your way. God can promote you above other people. God can promote you past other people. You know, when we were running a business before I went into the ministry, man, I, every Saturday is to do marketing. Those days there we had, remember the old fax machine? And I used to pray. And we had a, a business that worked a lot with attorneys all around South Africa, even around the world. And I should pray, Lord, let this fax land on the right person's desk. Now, I know I worked in a legal company. And in the old days, there was a room where the faxes went. Nowadays, each secretary has got their emails coming to their, their boss and it goes straight to his desk. But those days, it was fax. They would maybe have four or five faxes in a row. But it was somebody from the mail room had to take that and put it onto that person's desk. And I used to pray, Lord, let this land on the right person's desk. And let me tell you something. Monday would go. I'll say, Lord, let it please come to the top of the pile. And then suddenly Tuesday would hit. And many times we would come back to the office and the whole floor was full. Now, friends, we had a fax machine that had a roll. Remember, you get the roll. Finished. With every instruction coming from them. Just, Mom, you remember that, hey? Mom used to say, Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> every, t every day it would go like that. And I'm telling you, friends, if you trust the Lord, you'll see what God will do. Your friends, He will launch you into things that you've never imagined possible. And I want to encourage you today. Because with God, all things are possible. Do you know that? With God, all things are possible. He's your provider. Nothing is ever wasted. Don't look to man to be your provider. Look to God. He is your provider. God is your provider. And I want to say to you today, friends, nothing wasted. No amount of time that you spend in church is ever wasted. No amount of time of you ever spending in the Bible is wasted. No amount of time that you spend on your knees in prayer is ever wasted. You are you are filling the senses. The Bible says there's senses in heaven. Bowls. You can have a look. Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 8. That are filled with the prayers of the saints. So your amount of prayers that you pray are never wasted. Let me tell you something, friends. One of these days you will come and testify and say, God is good. I never gave up praying for that loved one. I never gave up praying and thanking the Lord for that job. I never gave up giving, uh, praying and thanking the Lord for my healing, for my complete healing. 
The Lord let that cancer just fall out. Somebody was giving me a testimony that fibroids just fell out of the person through the power of prayer. Can we have an amen? Let me tell you something. There's nothing impossible with God. And so friends, today, let us not be like the prodigal son before he came home. But when he left home, the Bible says in Luke chapter 15, verse 13 says, And not many days afterwards, the younger son gathered all together and went away into a far country, and there he wasted his property. He wasted his, his inheritance before he's even, his dad even died. Wasted it. Friends, let us not be wasters. He wasted it through riotous living. The Bible says there was a certain rich man in Luke 16, 1, who had a steward. And he was accused to him that he had wasted his goods. Friends, never waste what God has put into your hand. Be found to be faithful stewards. Be found to be faithful in what God puts into our hand. He asks us, what do you have in your hand? Don't waste it. Don't waste that anointing. Don't waste that talent. Don't waste those resources that God has given. Be faithful what God has given to you to do and do it well. Do it well. And I'm sure Philip who stood there and just watched you hear Jesus. And we have a little boy with five loaves and two fishes. And I'm sure Philip stood there flabbergasted. And that's why when we eventually hear of the miracles that Philip did, he was even used by God. He was translated. He spoke to the Ethiopian eunuch. Those are miracles. When you start seeing miracles happening in front of your face, you'll start believing. Friends, start believing and let nothing be wasted. Don't allow your circumstance that you're going through right now to hinder your future. God's not finished with you yet. I know I went on a little bit longer tonight, but I just felt I had to speak this word. Friends, those that are online, let's go and get down and pray. We're going to go and pray now. I encourage you for 10 minutes, just go and pray. No amount of time on your knees is wasted. And remember, we love you and we appreciate you. If you're here in the area of Woodlands for Gospel Church, 54 Norwich Crescent on Sunday, we've got the carols by candlelight. We'd love to invite you. Come along. Come and join in. Come and be part of the fellowship. And come and be blessed. We're starting at 4 p.m. And we're going to have a blessed time. Going to have some donuts and two liter cool drink together. Bring them along and let's enjoy some time of fellowship before the service. The Carols by Candlelight is going to be a powerful time. Invite somebody to come with you. God bless you. Remember that Jesus.